In this video, we're gonna give you a beginner's guide into how to shoot film. We're here in Indianapolis with our friend BC, and he shoots a lot of films, so he's agreed to help us out with this video. And we're gonna cover the most popular type of film, which is 35 millimeter. BC, what do we need? You need 35 millimeter camera and a roll of film. That makes sense. Let's get started. Most 35 millimeter cameras are one of the following. SLR, where you can switch out the lenses, like the Canon AE-1 or the Minolta X700. Rangefinder, like this Leica M6, or point and shoot, like this Olympus MG2. With film photography, your ISO refers to how sensitive the film is to light. It's also known as the film speed. The higher the number, the more sensitive the film is to light. For instance, here we have Portra 160 and Portra 400. Portra 400 will be better in lower light since it's a higher ISO. Another difference between the film speeds is the lower the film speed, the finer the grain will be. The higher the film speed, the fatter the grain. Another note to add, the film speed is a recommended ISO you set your camera to in order to properly expose. It's not necessarily a hard and fast rule. Film has a lot more latitude when it comes to exposure. There's a lot of different 35mm film stocks available and each one is going to have its own characteristics, grain, and color profile that define its look. We mainly shoot Kodak Portra because it's great for portraits and getting good skin tone and detail. Today we're shooting with these. We're going to start by loading Portra 400 film into this Minolta X700 SLR camera. Each camera may be slightly different, but to load film, you likely need to lift the rewind knob up to release the door latch. Other cameras may just have a slide switch that you can push down to open the door. Then load the new film canister into the film chamber. It should click into place. Then just pull out the film a little until it reaches the spool and catches onto it. Make sure the film stays aligned and doesn't get slanted. From there, release the shutter and then use the film advance lever to finish loading the film. Once you've ensured the film is advancing properly, you can close the back of the camera. You may need to press the shutter release and advance the film several times until your frame counter reaches zero. Unlike digital photography, where we underexpose to maintain highlight detail, with film, you can't really bring back shadow detail when you underexpose. So with film, we try to expose properly, or if anything, overexpose a little to capture the most detail in an image. Okay, so the first image I'm gonna take is with my Leica M6. This is my favorite film camera. Um, it's a rangefinder, and I'll explain what that means in a second. Right now I have Portrait 160 in here, and I'm gonna shoot a portrait of Daniel. And since it's a rangefinder, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna look through my viewfinder, and there's a little rectangle in the center that has like a blurry image in it when it's unfocused. And I just have to move my focus wheel, turn it until Daniel becomes in focus inside of that square. So the ghost image will like align with his actual image. Okay, ready, set, start going. Okay. We'll see how that turns out. All right, the second camera I'm using is this MG2. This is our everyday shooter. I just throw it in my bag and then I always have it with me. It's all automatic, so I don't really have to worry about anything. I just worry about the composition and the camera takes care of the rest. Whatever it thinks is best, it'll do. Um, the one thing to keep in mind with a camera like this is um, there's a sort of bracket um, outline when you look through the viewfinder. Make sure your frame lines contain your entire composition, otherwise you might get um, some weird things cut off, some whims out of, out of frame and stuff. Okay, so right now we're gonna shoot our models over here. We have them posed really stoically right next to the beautiful light that's coming through the window. Uh, and I'm just gonna do a vertical portrait of them. So I'm going to be using the Canon A1. It's a pretty readily available entry-level film camera. Um, you can find them definitely for under $100 with a lens. So just search around and your grandpa might just have one in the attic somewhere. So I'm going to be shooting with Provia 100, which is a slide film from Fuji. Uh, Kodak also makes Ektachrome, which is another 100 speed slide film. Uh, so slide film returns a positive instead of a negative like you're used to with color film or black and white. Uh, and so one thing with slide film is you want to make sure your exposure is 
spot on as possible because you don't have as much latitude for over and under exposure as with black and white or color. You ready? Three, two, one. Since we're using low film speeds and don't have a lot of available light, we're going to use a tripod for a lot of these interior shots because we need to use a slower shutter to expose correctly. And we want to limit camera shake. <laughs> By using the camera's built-in timer, we can also eliminate camera shake that occurs when pressing the shutter release button. All right, I'm gonna shoot with the Minolta X700. It's an SLR film camera, and I have Kodak Portra 400 in here. Portra's great for portraits. It has really good skin detail and skin tone. And so now I'm gonna take some portraits of BC and see what we get. Okay. Three, two, one. Yeah, okay, that was something. Yeah. That was a photo. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much in post, right? Okay, ready? Yeah. Can you get a little higher? Just a touch. Just a touch. Yeah, like, that's pretty good. <laughs> cool. Straight or like? You do a little bendy. Like a little witch's hand. <laughs> Alright, ready? Three, two, one. Like that? Yeah, do that. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. a premium Skillshare membership. That means unlimited access to all the classes and communities. Classes like bringing a 3D object into live action footage. And how to document people and places authentically. And much, much more. There's over 7 million creators already learning with Skillshare. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Over 25,000 classes on photography, design, business, and more. Click the link in the description to get started. Go ahead and stand in front of this door really fast so I can just get focused because I'm going to do it pretty shallow. Okay, right there. Um, and then just make sure that you're like in a, a line like, um, to me. Yes, yeah, for, so that you're on the same focal plane. Back up and walk up. Yeah, I'm just getting focused. Okay, so my focus is good. So go ahead and start back there. And then BC, just make sure you're like a step and a half up in front of tools. Okay. I was going for the high five, but... Should we run and high five? Yeah, you should run and like tear. Like, we will miss. Here. I'm gonna go up. Here, let's, we're gonna practice first. Ready? Okay, ready? That's what you see. Yeah. Is that something? I always practice that. <laughs> I am going to look through my viewfinder at the rangefinder patch, which is this rectangle in the center. And I'm gonna move my focus wheel until the image inside of the rangefinder patch aligns with the picture. You'll get it, you'll get it, I'm sure. If you want to wet your beak with film photography, we recommend picking up an inexpensive film camera to start. The Canon AE-1 is an affordable SLR camera, 
We love our Olympus MG2 for point and shoots, but there are cheaper options as well. You may also have a relative with an older film camera that you can get for free, so try sucking up to your aunt or whatever. Then try out a handful of film stocks to see what you like best for your photography. For developing, if you don't have a local shop that still develops film, there are a few labs here in the US that you can mail your film to in order to get developed. You can also get digital scans of your prints for an additional fee, which is what we always do. This way you can easily get your film scans onto your computer and bless your feed on social media. All right, well, we pretty much ran out of light here, so we're gonna take these cameras back to LA and finish out the film and get them developed and scanned. Thanks to BC for helping us out with this video. Thanks to Triple Fat Goose for giving us these coats and keeping us warm in Indiana. And we will see you guys back in LA. I hope this inspired you guys to take a look at 35mm film and maybe try it out. Um, like and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you haven't. Uh, big thanks to Aaron and Rebecca for providing their Airbnb for the video. And we'll see you later. Wow, you're a natural. Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> You want to join the channel? Do <laughs> you think that was good? I think it's fine. You're like, that's yeah, fine if you want to be a corporate. <laughs> <laughs> Take it. Yeah. But it wasn't. Great. It wasn't good. <laughs>